going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be covering Nintendo 3DS. Now in the past I did do a video on 3DS but we were using RetroArch for that and since then I've had a lot of people asking about the standalone version of Citra so that's what we're going to be covering here today. In the past couple years the Citra emulator has definitely come a long way and in my experience I've had much better performance with Intel and Nvidia versus AMD especially on the GPU side because Citra is very heavy in OpenGL. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Citra emulator for LaunchBox and Big Box so you can play your favorite Nintendo 3DS games. The very first thing you're going to need are some Nintendo 3DS games. I have mine in a folder on my desktop and I've just named it Nintendo 3DS. Inside of here, I have a few games. Most of mine are .3DS, but the Citra emulator also supports .CXI. So these are the games that I'm going to be importing into LaunchBox. Another thing you should take note of is the auto hotkey that I have here. I'll actually list this in the description of the video. But this is going to allow us to go full screen when we start it up. It's also going to move the mouse cursor out of the way. And it's going to allow us to easily exit the Citra emulator once it's up and running in LaunchBox. But now it's time to download the Citra emulator. I will leave a link in the description. We're just going to head over to the citra.emu.org website. Choose download here. You will see a big download bar here, but this is an installer. And with LaunchBox, I like to keep everything portable. So what I'm going to do is go to manual download. And I'm going to download the nightly. Make sure it's the Windows version. Just click on the little Windows icon. And this is the same version that's going to be in that installer. So now we have the emulator downloaded. I'm going to go to my download section and I'm going to extract it. Just right click and extract to itself. Inside of the Citra Windows Men GW folder, you'll see another one, Nightly Men GW. I'm actually just going to rename this folder here to Citra. And inside of this folder, you'll see a bunch of different files, but mainly we're going to be dealing with the CitraQt.exe. I'm going to snap this to the left hand side. And like I mentioned, I do like keeping my LaunchBox portable. So I'm going to head over to my LaunchBox installation directory, emulators, and I'm going to place the Citra folder that we just renamed right in here just to keep everything together. So now we have that ready to go. It's time to open up LaunchBox. We're going to configure the emulator and then we're going to import our games. All right. So from the drop down menu, we want to find tools, manage emulators, and we're going to add a new emulator. Emulator name. I'm going to use Citra. For the emulator application path, we're going to head back to our LaunchBox installation directory, emulators, Citra, and we want to use the CitraQt.exe. Just double click on this. Now we're going to go over to associated platforms and the associated platform with the Citra emulator is Nintendo 3DS. We're going to use this as the default emulator. And now we're going to head over to running auto hotkey script. Like I mentioned, I will leave this in the description, but I do have it in a little text file on my desktop. We're just going to copy all of this from the description of this video and paste it right in. Choose OK, and we can now close this window down. So we have Citra configured for LaunchBox and BigBox, but now we need to add our games. So we're going to head back to the drop down menu, Tools, Import, ROM Files. And we're going to locate our 3DS games. Go ahead and read through all of this. I'm going to add a folder and I'm going to navigate to where I have my 3DS games right on my desktop and a folder called Nintendo 3DS. I'm just going to choose that folder. OK. Next. Platform for imported games. We're going to find Nintendo 3DS. Choose Next. And as for the emulator, obviously we're using Citra. Now, since my games are on my desktop, I actually want to copy the files to my LaunchBox games folder. This is going to do it automatically for me. But if you already have them located there, just use them in their current location. We're going to search for game information from the LaunchBox games database. I definitely want to download as much artwork as I can. So we'll choose next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Not for the Citra emulator. So we'll choose next. And here we have the name of the game, the game location, and the file extension. Most of mine are .3DS. Choose Finish. LaunchBox is now going to download all of our metadata and artwork. Just give this some time to finish up.
and my 3DS games were imported successfully. Over here in the left hand column we have a new section called Nintendo 3DS. And here's the games that I imported. And now it's time to configure our controller and a few extra tweaks with the Citra emulator. So what I like to do is just find a game, right click, open Citra. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller with my PC here in LaunchBox. The first thing I always do is configure the controller. So at the very top, we're going to go to Emulation, Configure, and in here we'll see a few options, but we want to choose Controls. It's really easy to set up your controller. Basically, these are your face buttons, A, B, X, Y. We're just going to click on one, press the corresponding button on our controller. And we're going to go through the whole list here. It's really easy to set up. Circle pad is your left analog stick. C stick is your right analog stick. And finally, start and select. Choose OK. And we now have our controller configured with the Citra emulator. There's a couple extra settings in here that I usually mess around with. We'll go back to emulation, configure. From general, I leave my emulation speed at 100%. System, you can change your name if you'd like to. It's really up to you. You can change your birthday and stuff like that. CPU clock speed, for me, always stays at 100. Now, like I mentioned, this does favor Intel CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs. I've had really bad luck with AMD APUs and the Citra emulator. I've just never been able to get it to run at full speed no matter what I do. But my system that I'm using here has an Intel CPU and an NVIDIA GPU, so I should get some pretty good performance out of it. So for the renderer, our internal resolution, if you have a lower end system, leave it at native. For this one here, I can go up a bit to 3x. From texture filtering, I usually choose by cubic. I personally like the way this looks, but you can experiment if you want to. Screen layout, we have default, single screen, large screen, side by side. This is really personal preference. Obviously, you can go with a single screen, side by side, or large screen. And with large screen, you'll have your main play field and a big screen on the left hand side and your touch screen from the 3DS in the bottom right hand corner. I personally like the way this looks here, but you can always choose side by side, vertical or single screen. From the enhancement section, this is usually all I change, but we're going to go to advanced. Enable hardware renderer, you definitely want this checked, and the hardware shader can be turned off for lower end systems, but if you have an Nvidia GPU, this should work out really well. I personally would leave this checked. When it comes to accurate multiplication, this is a great option to have on, but it does require a pretty beefy GPU to work correctly. Enable JIT needs to be enabled, and I always choose VSync here so I don't have any screen tearing. You can change audio, you can go back through your controls if you'd like to, but that's about it for the Citra configuration settings. Choose OK, and we can go ahead and close the Citra emulator down. So now that we have the Citra emulator configured properly for LaunchBox and we have our games imported, it's now time to start it up. I'm going to go with Dead or Alive Dimensions. It's going to automatically go full screen for us because we have that auto hotkey already set up. I'm going to get to the main menu here so we can take a look at different screen settings. So as you can see, I have the large screen over on the left hand side. I have the small screen on the bottom right hand side. We've already set it up so it goes full screen automatically, but if you want to get back out of it so you can get into the settings easily, press F11. We can go to emulation. We can configure from here if you need to change any of the graphic settings, but we also have a little quick menu for our views. So we'll go to view, screen layout, default. It's going to be top and bottom. Side by side. single screen, and you can swap these screens by going back to view, screen layout, swap screens, and large screen, which is the one I personally prefer. We'll go back full screen by pressing F11, and I'll get into a little bit of gameplay. So yeah, performance here is great with OpenGL, but it really depends on the PC you're running this on. You could have really bad performance even at native resolutions, especially with low-end AMD GPUs. But if you are able to run the Citra emulator at full speed on your PC, definitely try upscaling because these games look absolutely amazing, especially around 1080p. 
To exit the emulator, just press escape on your keyboard, or if you're running controller automation with LaunchBox or BigBox, just use your hotkey. But that's pretty much it for this video. We really appreciate you watching and hope you have the Citra emulator up and running in LaunchBox and BigBox. It's definitely worth adding. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.